to another episode of the Marvel Masterworks Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Adam, and with me is my co-host, Donnie. Donnie, how's it going? What's up, comic book fans? It's the man that knows that 3 a.m. on Fridays is the Scarlet Witching Hour. It's the Emerald Enthusiast. Uh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I saw that you were up late watching that. Um, and, uh, I'm quite night. the night owl, yes. Yeah, I, I watched it the next day, uh, yeah, which was good because... I was fully awake and I needed to be to comprehend or attempt, let me rephrase, attempt to comprehend what was going on. <laughs> but yes, today, uh, the main uh, chunk of our episode will be reviewing uh, the first two episodes of WandaVision, uh, which um, uh, premiered on Friday, January 15th. Um, <clears throat> and each week is subsequently going to have one episode. Um, Donnie and I are probably going to uh, reconvene every two episodes to, to do reviews of, of WandaVision. Um, so we will be relatively uh, up to date. Um, and so uh, so we will be keep, uh, right, right along for the ride uh, with you as we go through the series. Yeah, I'm uh, very but, excited about this series. I was actually counting the minutes. Uh, at 2.53 a.m., I started counting the minutes. So, okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, yeah, it's it's nice to have Marvel content back. Uh, that's for, uh, let, me, let me rephrase. Marvel film and television content back. Because we've right. had Marvel content in the sure. comments. Sure, sure. And I see a lot of people online that says, oh, finally some Marvel content. Well, that's not entirely true. You've had Marvel content. You, whether you're reading it or not, that's your problem or not. Sure. Uh, Head down but, to your but, local comic uh, shop and yeah. support the comic book industry. Exactly. Um, so, Donnie, aside, before we get into some news, because there is some news, we'll do both segments that we usually do on these vidcasts. So, okay. in terms of the Marvel side of the equation, what have you been reading and what have you been watching that's not WandaVision? Uh, I have been reading more of the uh, Venom run. The recent Venom run that is leading up to King and Black, which I eventually want to get once it's a collected edition. Yes, sir. Um, as far as watching things, I went back recently and watched a little bit of Daredevil. Mm. And uh, also, uh, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. I've watched a couple of my favorite episodes of that, which I consider actually that's the that's the standard bearer as far as animation goes, as far as um, a, a TV well, well, well. series. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, oh, and I also read um, uh, the uh, the Maestro origin this week. So, yeah, the the four part the four part series, right? Yeah, I'm actually catching up on that. I read the first two, and, uh, and so now I've got to read the uh, the, the, the the last two. Uh, and so, the, uh, what our, what you've been reading is kind of similar, um, and I I'm, I'm liking it. I, like I have no idea. I am not familiar with Maestro beforehand, but like before this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'd like to go back. I think it was the Peter David uh, run. Yeah, that was the, it was a 1992 Future Imperfect. And then he was in for a while, um, and I forget whether it was just Wolverine or what, or maybe it was Old Man Logan. He was, there was a version of Mike, Maestro and Old Man Logan yes, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so we, we may have to go back on our podcast and eventually review the uh, old uh, the original run of, of maestro as well as this new this new iteration at some point we'll, we'll sit down and review it um, but I'm I'm digging it it's really cool um, yeah if you're I, I will say this if you're unhappy with how uh, the Hulk has evolved in the MCU uh, this is this is more your, your 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 for you so definitely I recommend reading it the art is beautiful the, the two issues that I've read is very intriguing. Uh, so I recommend it uh, highly. In terms of what I've been watching um, on the Marvel side of the ledger, um, I recently watched because it was on TV again. So you know I was bored uh, in in lockdown. So I'm like, oh, it's on. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll, I'll grin and bear the commercials. Uh, but it was uh, the the Avengers, the first Avenger uh, film, and it's just such a good film. Um, I and, and I will say I think that's the best comic book film ever made to date. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's definitely 
no one can well I mean it's your opinion so nobody should argue with you regardless but the argument can be made that that is that is in fact you know it's one of the it's one of the choices that I think if you put it out there you're not going to get too many people up in arms and oh my god that's some hot take or, or anything like that right uh, so yeah it's it, but it, it's 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 quite good. So really, I, I think most people would have it in the top five. Oh you know? yeah, easily, easily. Yeah, you, know, you 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 think about you know other mo- you know movies like you know Superman and The Dark Knight. Uh, you know some people you know Black Panther movies yeah. like that. There, yeah, yeah. but uh, it it would be one that would make a lot of people's top five at least. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's our what we've been reading and watching combined segment because why not? It's our show. We can combine whatever we want. Uh, but um, Let's, there is a, 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 quite a bit of Marvel news mixed in with some rumor, so let's let's d- deep dive into it. So where 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 shall we start in terms of the news, uh, Donnie? Where do you want to? Well, since I mentioned Daredevil, you and I were discussing the rumors of Charlie Cox having filmed scenes for Spider-Man Three. What do you think about that? Yeah, this is uh, th- this has been a a, a source of. Uh, Discussion for a while, um, and it, it's just picking up steam. Uh, I mean, the latest report is comicbook.com. Uh, before that, it's uh, by a scooper uh, named uh, Charles Murphy, who, who runs his own site that that that, um, that initially sort of floated this out there a few months back. And you know, obviously, with 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 people in the scoop game. You've got to be cautious because you know information they're getting from their sources could end up changing or, or what have you, or, or you know it may be purposely inaccurate put out by the studio to sort of dissuade people. However, what I like to do in these kind of situations is look at the track record of the scooper that's reporting these news or these this information, and I found Charles Murphy, especially on the Marvel side of the ledger to be very accurate. He's been spot on with some of the stuff that he's reported before. Uh, and and so I, I, I was inclined to believe it the first few times I heard it. Uh, and now being backed up by Brandon Davis of comicbook.com, who seems to be kind of well connected in the, in the, with, with, you know, the, the, the higher ups uh, in, in, in Marvel and, and at DC as well, because he gets a lot of those interviews and stuff. So he does have some, you know, PR connections there. Uh, but more so than that, Donnie, Kevin Feige has been doing a lot of press given, you know, WandaVision uh, debuting. And <clears throat> he was flat out asked uh, by, uh, I think it's Steve Weintraub of, uh, of Collider, about Charlie Cox uh, playing... Uh, Daredevil again, Matt Murdock, mm-hmm. and his answer was very. He was choosing his words carefully. Um, yeah. somewhat evasive, but not a denial. Yeah, and so when you know when Kevin Feige says, uh, when it's a no, usually when he says no flat out, mm-hmm. I think that it is his word. Like especially if he, if it's like fairly immediate, but when he says well. You know, and he's nodding his head and not really committal to answering. That tells me that that's just something that they don't want out just yet. So I'm going to, at this point right now, choose to believe this information. Um, I'm not going to pin all my hopes on it has to be true or I'm not going to enjoy the movie. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it at, at face value for now. And I think if they do bring... Charlie Cox back. I think it's a great decision because he was fantastic. I think if you could only take two people from the Netflix universe of, of shows, to me, personally, I'd want it to be Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio. Well, so, and that's that's been one of the main criticisms of the MCU. Not that there are a lot of them. But people really want to see the Netflix series acknowledged as part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. And, and again, I think Daredevil 
to me, just like it screams about, you know, especially having something like, whether it be a series or another movie, that character needs to have a presence in the MCU. Um, not just because he's, you know, my favorite Marvel character. I just think with the book knocking it out of the park as it is, the Netflix version of the series being as widely praised as it was, I think Kevin Feige and those folks would be silly not to bring the character now that you have the rights back into the MCU. Now, and again, I'm not saying they have to bring back every bit of continuity from the Netflix series. If you bring back Charlie and you want to soft reboot some things, I'm fine with that. Um, but I, I think the guy the guy did a, a very good job and, and seems to want to, would love to continue playing the role. Uh, given all these factors, I'd be open for it. But again, and then uh, by the same token, if this doesn't turn out to be true and they do bring back their devil, but it's a recast at some point down the road, I'll be cool with that too. Like I'm mm -hmm. open to either or. But given all the all the all the, the factors, I think it'd be worth if you're if if all if the stars align and you can bring Charter Cox back, why not? He, he seems enthusiastic about a return. Yeah. I mean, so, some of the comments that I've seen, and uh, and I'll say the same thing for, uh, you know, um, Luke Cage and Iron Fist. You know, those yeah. are two characters that, that are, they're a pretty big deal in Marvel history. So I would like to see them, um, whether it's the, you know, the, the actors from the Netflix series or, or recast like you talk about, I would just really like to see them integrated into the next phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, now quick, quick comment. Uh, uh, Donnie, just on yeah. this before we go to our next topic, and it's just speculation on my part. Okay. So recently, uh, Ben Affleck has praised, much to the chagrin of a certain sect of fandom, <laughs> which will remain nameless. But um, um, Ben Affleck has recently praised the genius of Kevin Feige, saying, you know, if there was one producer that told me that he understood exactly what what the audience wanted. Uh, if that producer was Kevin Feige, I'd believe him 100%. Mm -hmm. So I had a theory. What if a couple of years down the road, Ben Affleck, the director, not the actor, directs a Daredevil project in the MCU? Wouldn't that be a, a nice full circle? You know, I, I would love it. And uh, I actually own the Daredevil director's cut. And it's I, a great, yeah, yeah, I love it. I, I think highly underrated. Uh, definitely better than the theatrical version. And uh, yeah, I would I would welcome Ben Affleck coming back and doing that. Sure. Yeah, like I said, I don't necessarily. I'm not saying bring him back in the red leather. Uh, that's not what I'm, I'm I'm championing. I'm just saying Ben Affleck, the director, in the right studio circumstance, like I could, and he could definitely deliver the kind of storytelling a character like Daredevil would need. So that's just me putting out a, a wish list item. For a couple of years down the road, that's you know just 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 bang that, Kevin. That's free advice for me. Take it or leave it. You'll probably leave it because you know what you're doing, and I don't. But but just well, you know, hey, let's put this out there. The bottom line is, you know, the the DC movies are still kind of in flux. They're his, yeah. they're uh, their future. So maybe you know Ben Affleck says, hey, maybe uh, you know I'll hop to the other team and see what opportunities I have there. Yeah, like I said, they they may not be in the acting realm. Just because I think after the whole shebang with 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 the DCEU and what happened with Affleck there, uh, I think I think Flash will be his, his swan song, uh, and then but but I think as a director down the road I think he'd be open to working with Kevin Feige, just based on those comments and the fact that he's just recently signed on to direct a fantasy project for Disney. You know he's getting his feet wet in in. A higher budget realm of directing, so you know all, all those stars aligning and those comments. I don't know, it just got me thinking. So there's just speculation on my part. Um, but speaking of actual casting that we know is confirmed, uh, we do have some casting for an upcoming Marvel uh, Disney Plus series, Moon Knight. Um, now I have to be fair. 
I have very limited exposure to Moon Knight. From what I've seen, I've liked, and I definitely want to do a deep dive on the character. Uh, and I will be doing that uh, down the road, and maybe we'll cover it on this podcast mm-hmm. and vidcast uh, when, I, when we do. But the, 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 the series is coming. And uh, recently, one of the producers confirmed that Oscar Isaac is indeed playing uh, Moon Knight. And now they've started filling in some other roles because apparently they're going to start shooting in March at some point. Um, So the first up we have actress May. uh, How am I going to pronounce this? Kalam Kalame, or I think that's how you pronounce it. It's I could be wrong, uh, but uh, she is joining the project in an uns, unspecified role. But she is the the female lead. So you know, yeah. uh, again, I'm not too familiar with uh, with Moon Knight's uh, cast of characters, um, so I don't know who she would be playing. And it doesn't say, so I can't really speculate uh, who she's uh, playing. Uh, and they've also cast Ethan Hawke. Okay. As the villain in Moon Knight, mm-hmm. um, so again, and they don't specify which villain he is. So we can't really, unless you know any of my Moon Knight villains that he could possibly play. Uh, no, you know I have read Moon Knight, but you know my comic book reading now spans over forty years, so I I can't exactly remember who he would be and, and like who Ethan Hawke would remind me of. So I'm not sure there. Uh, but I, I like the fact that you pronounce the name because that's that's one of my, my worst fears is when I come up on a name that I've never actually said out loud before. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> like, well, I, I, like I said, put it up on the screen. Here you go. If I, if I butcher these names, these actors are, are, are welcome to contact me and, and give me a proper pronunciation of how to do it. And I'll correct that it. sounds like a plan. Yeah. Or come on the show and tell me how, how, how to pronounce it. We'll, we'll gladly do an interview. Not a problem. Um, so... What do you think of Ethan Hawke? Ethan Hawke as as an actor and coming on board. What do you think of that? I, I think it's another good addition to the, you know the MCU. I mean, it, it it continues to expand and use actors and actresses in different ways, and that's why the Marvel Cinematic Universe is probably the dominant force in entertainment today. You know, you can make the ar- argument for Star Wars too. Either way, Disney's laughing all the way to the bank, but. Oh, yeah. It, Marvel continually. Million dollar man <laughs> as, as they... uh, yeah, I, you know they continue to appeal to different segments of people, and that's why they've been rolling on now since two thousand eight. So I think it's another fine addition. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, you know, I uh, interesting. I'll just throw this out there. I've heard a lot of chatter online uh, about. Could, you know, fan speculation, could Ethan Hawke be playing Dracula? That I, I really do like the Marvel version of, of Dracula. If you've ever seen uh, one of the itinerations of that character, if you've ever seen Avengers Assemble, uh, a very interesting dynamic there where uh, Dracula, um, the vampire nation, actually made a truce with the United States during World War II out of fear of the Third Reich. Uh, and, of course, that comes back to be a very kind of contentious um, relationship after World War II. So uh, there's a lot of uh, ways they could go with that character that would be different than the versions of Dracula that we've seen on screen yeah. before. And we know Blade's coming. So, I mean, if Blade is coming, you know, Dracula can't be too far behind. He's probably... Uh been to his dentist and is sharpening his fangs. Uh, so uh, who knows? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll find out in due time uh, a way who uh, Ethan Hawke is playing. But uh, I'm, uh, like I said, the, the, I, I most recently read um, Moon Knight in the Avengers, in his stint in the Avengers, mm-hmm. and I really like what I saw there. So I'm going to go back and, 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 and delve deep, and maybe we can coordinate and do an episode about it. I've heard good things about the Bendis run, so Mm -hmm. I may start there. We'll see. Um, But, um, so, in in continuing in the live action front before we transition quickly to the comics, but 
um, some unsuspecting information uh, came about recently, and that is, according to Deadline, The Hollywood Reporter, Variety, all the big trades, um, Chris Evans, a.k.a. Steve Rogers, a.k.a. Captain America, is in apparently in talks to return to the role for a Marvel film with an option for more. Now, I was surprised in part because I thought eventually he'd come around and come back into play, but I wasn't expecting to hear about it this soon. Um, now, to be fair, Chris Evans took to Twitter and, and responded to the news by saying, news to me with a, a shrugging emoji, like, you know, like this. You know, mm -hmm. this. <laughs> uh, and, and again, that to me really does not deny anything because this seems to be the status quo for actors appearing in superhero properties. Uh, you know, let's re uh, just go... Uh, Couple, couple examples. Jason Momoa told a reporter that he could punch him in the face <laughs> if he ended up being Aquaman <laughs> in Superman, Batman, and who was Aquaman? And hey, guess what? You, Jason Momoa. That Jason Momoa just seems like a fun guy to be yeah. around. <laughs> Jason, that, that reporter hasn't punched him in the face yet. I'm not shocked by that either. Uh, uh, now, would you want to? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, you know, Tatiana Maslany, who is confirmed as playing She-Hulk, uh, before she was officially confirmed <laughs> by Kevin Feige himself, was flat out denied that she was playing She-Hulk. So, yeah. again, him saying news to me on Twitter is par for the course. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't get the, too confused over that. But, but. What is your take on the on the seemingly potential return? I have an idea of where this is going. And again, this is just speculation on my part. But there was, you know, a recent comic book story. And when I say recent, I mean within the last few years. I don't remember exactly. But I remember reading it. And that's uh, Captain America gets the super soldier serum sucked out of him. I believe it was a character called the Iron Nail. And he was aged to like over 100 years, or maybe it was 90 years. And we saw something like that at the end of Endgame. And this happened to be the same time that Sam Wilson took up the mantle of Captain America. Very so nice. could we see a continuation of the old Captain America kind of leading the Avengers from afar like he did in the comics? I think that's a possibility. I think that's the likely route they take. Because I've seen a lot of fans say, well, you know, the cynics. And I'm, 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 this is a quote, this is a tweet that I read. Well, I guess Marvel couldn't stand having a black Captain America. Um, to which I, I wanted to put up my hand, metaphorically, because it's Twitter, and say, um, and I, I didn't do this, by the way, because I, I, I argue enough with, with Snyder Hollicks. Uh, so I can only have my fill. But, but my, my retort is, well, if you read the comics, Sam Wilson was Captain America yeah. when old man Steve Rogers was, as you say, uh, leading S.H.I.E.L.D. And, and sort of spearheading the Avengers. Yeah. So one being back doesn't exclude the other from being Captain America. Again, as we always say on the show, before you make asinine comments, you know, seek the comics. And, yes, and, and, and do some reading. Yeah, not only will you pr help the comic book industry by doing so, you'd also prevent yourself from looking foolish and making statements like that. Um, I, so I thought I, Sam was a great Captain America too. I really liked his costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think, like I said, I think Falcon and the Winter Soldier is going to take us one step closer to that. And I don't think Steve potentially being back in, in, a, in a kind of role that that Robert Downey Jr. took when he came back for, you know, homecoming and the like. Um, 
I don't think that's going to disrupt what they have planned for Sam Wilson at all. No, I don't think so. I, I, I figure him in as a, a big part of the next phase. So, And you know what? With the state the world is in and with the state of things – uh, with you guys, you know, my neighbors, uh, I, I think a little bit more Steve Rogers right now uh, on screen could be a good thing. Uh, yes, very much so. And maybe, look, and maybe uh, you just hear me out again. Let, let's not be foolish. The, the paycheck that, 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 that Chris Evans would receive would be a nice, nice thing. And it would help oh, him. Yeah. Would help him fund some from some passion projects. Yeah. But I can imagine over the holidays, Chris Evans sitting on his couch watching all this garbage unfold. Yeah. Thinking to himself, you know, he probably got a call from Marvel, and then he thought to himself, me getting back into that role again in this time could really make a statement while entertaining people that goes beyond a tweet. Mm -hmm. And I think that could be part of his reasoning. And, and without taking this, this vidcast too far, Chris Evans, you know, he has been outspoken on some issues and yeah. I, I don't, I really do think he has, you know, a, a social conscience and maybe that was something that appealed to him. Of, hey, I can come back and, you know, inject a little hope into the world. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, by the way, I appreciate your your invitation of you know uh, uh, allowing me to bring my uh, family up to Canada. Anytime, <laughs> you're always welcome. Anytime Definitely want to visit someday. Yeah. Anytime you want to escape the madness, you can uh, you can <laughs> you can come up here anytime. Uh, especially because you're going to be getting the uh, the vaccine soon, so you know that that enhances your. Uh, your, the, 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 the favorability of you coming up here. <laughs> um, um, but, um, but yeah, so that's the, the live action news. On the comic front, something interesting is going on, uh, Donnie, and that is the Miles Morales uh, Spider-Man with issue 25 of that title is going to be the start of his very own Clone Wars. Uh, I think you mean cl Clone Saga, not Clone, clone Saga, Wars. yeah, sorry. Right. So many Clone so many clones storylines in the Marvel <laughs> universe. Who knows? But yeah, uh, uh, clone saga. Right. Uh, I mean, and they've been teasing it in, in the current run of his book, which I've been reading. There is a version of Miles Morales, Miles Morales an older version of Miles Morales, uh, from another world, another Earth, uh, that is causing him some issue without going into spoilers. And I guess that is going to evolve and expand starting with issue 25. But what's your take on, uh, first of all, have you been reading any Miles Morales? And two, what's your take on them exploring the Clone Saga for this iteration of Spider-Man? Uh, I have not read any recently. Uh, I have, you know, he has shown up in Venom a lot, which I have seen him there. But... I read the Clone Saga. I know that it came, it was very kind of convoluted. I still enjoyed parts of it, the original Clone Saga. It also gives, you know, Marvel more chance to make, you know, more collectibles of different versions of Spider-Man characters, which is big bang for them. Of course. I, I'm not opposed to it. Let's, I, I always say with, with comic books, let's see how it turns out because any preconceptions could be torn down immediately. So... Wait till you actually read the material before you think about an old story and say, oh my gosh, no, I didn't like the old Clone or Saga. Yeah. yeah. Or before yeah. you yell into the void on Twitter. Right. My, my favorite is recently, not for me. Um, and this isn't just pertaining to the, the, the Clone Saga. Right. It's pertaining to the other side of the ledger um, with uh, another one of our favorites, Green Lantern. I've seen, you know, the reaction to the March solicit. Not for me. Um, and you know that. How? Have you read the issue? Right. You know, like, to me, look, I'm always an advocate. If you're a fan of a character and you support a character, you at least owe it to yourself to, at bare minimum, 
read one issue. Mm -hmm. Bare minimum. I usually give something, if I'm a fan of the character, I'll give it one story arc. Like if it's a new creative team, you know, I'll give it one story arc. And then if I'm completely just detesting it and reading it feels like homework, that's when I... Then you drop well, it for a while, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. But, but yeah. I always go on with the intention of giving it a, an arc. And so, again, to me, read, the, read at least one issue, give it a chance, and then make a decision. Don't make a snap judgment over a solicit, you know, it's it, or, or even a title. I, I think it's ridiculousness to do that, personally. So I urge people, at least give the creative team a chance to impress you. That, that goes for the, the, the Clone Saga with Miles Morales. That goes with Green Lantern. It goes with any character. Yeah. So I would right. agree. Always look for opportunities to support the comic book industry. That's right. Now, so I, I doubt there, I don't think, I think we've covered everything news wise, correct? Yes. Why don't we delve into the world of WandaVision? Yes, sir. Let's go. All right. Give us some sort of synopsis of what's going on. <laughs> you, <laughs> that, that's listen, not hard at all. Out, I read out the names. Now you can have fun with this. <laughs> uh, well, like I said, I was sitting up counting the minutes literally for this show. And it starts was off. Was it from the first minute to the last? Of... <laughs> <laughs> it was seven minutes until the last. Uh, yeah, I will say that. You know, we we saw, you know, stills from the show. We saw a little bit of footage, and we knew that it was going to be different. But they really hit the ground running in a very experimental way here. And uh, for some reason that is still unknown, and we don't know how many episodes it will take to kind of wrap our heads around where they are. Wanda and Vision are in a black and white world that is an homage in many ways to a lot of old 50s sitcoms. Um, you know, I saw, you know, people drawing comparisons to the Dick Van Dyke show, I Love Lucy. Bewitched. Uh, uh, yes, Bewitched. Uh, the Honeymooners. Mm. Some of our younger people, these may be shows that you're not familiar with. But there were a lot of kind of tropes that I saw along the way in these two episodes that reminded me of those old style TV shows, those old style sitcoms. Mm. So what was your first impression, sir? Well, I got to say, um, watching the watching the trailers kind of sets you up for, OK, this is going to be a little bit different than what we're used to. It's not your traditional, at least to start. You know, superhero extravaganza. Um, I, I gotta say, I have been. I know I'm, I'm on the I'm on the relatively younger side, um, so I wasn't alive when these a lot of these shows that they're homaging uh, were were you know happening on a weekly episodic basis, but. Let me point out that a lot of those shows, too, I saw them in reruns. I'm not that yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm old, but I'm not that old. I wasn't trying to imply anything, <laughs> sir. Um, uh, I'm going to start calling you uh, Professor Hulk just because you're, you're, just because yeah. you're older than yeah. I am. Yeah, uh, I, like the pro I like the Professor Hulk. Not necessarily the MCU Professor Hulk, but, uh, no, yeah, no, that, that's yeah, a big no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Um, but, so, but through my mother, who was a child when those shows were on, um, I was exposed by those like you via reruns and, and syndication and all that jazz and uh, I, I will say the way they were able to channel that aesthetic and that vibe and that tone and really you know pay, it, it felt like you were watching one of those shows so they really did a good job of capturing mm -hmm. that tone and that essence and so anyway it was good and I will say, um, Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen have great comedic chemistry and timing. I, I will say that. I, I um, laughed out loud numerous times. And yes, they, they are both 
well honed at their craft and there's a lot of chemistry on screen and yes i this was very different like you said than the the usual usual superhero smackdown that we see with marvel this is very different and again it's a different format than the movies so we yeah. don't exactly know what's going on after two episodes but we have an idea that there's well before we get to that at the end they are in some some alternate reality here indeed indeed yeah. um and and Not just the end, which gives you a reveal. You know, each of the first two episodes, there, there's something that reveals something deeper, you know, going on. But within the episode itself, you know, there are moments where, you know, music starts getting ominous. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and, it, and, and the tone slightly shifts, even for a little bit. And that gives you the hint of what's going on here, and, and like something's amiss. And I mean, I mean, let's be honest: if you're a fan of the MCU and you've been keeping up with the stuff, you know something's amiss because the last time we saw Vision, he was dead with a capital D. Um, right. So <laughs> he kind of looked like Opt Optimus Prime when when he lost the Matrix and turned gray. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's so so. Something is amiss, obviously, because he is here. First of all, he's present. He's alive. And two, they're in a black and white sitcom. Uh, so you know, if if you if you tuned in and said, "Oh yeah, this seems like sad as cool," uh, I don't know what world you've been living on and what 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 MCU you've been watching, um, but. Um, um, so there's that and I love the way like the use of, of the, the score to shift the music into that ominous territory mm -hmm. to alert you that something is amiss was really effective yes. and you know the first inference you kind of get was at the at the dinner table when Vision has his boss and his wife over and the boss starts choking on food and the wife is saying uh Stop this, stop it. And, you know, at first it's humorous, but then it gets more serious as she keeps saying it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, even Wanda takes herself out of the sitcom moment and looks plainly at Vision in a serious way and says, Vision, help him. Yes. Right? And so, so there are little cues in, in music, facial expression, tone of voice that, 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 that give you a sense of the shifting reality mm -hmm. and when things are literally getting serious and when they're 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 part of the manufactured reality and the the, the balance i think is well played and they haven't been depowered here they no. are no. yeah they are again they're in this alternate reality and and you see kind of the seeds laid out um they're asked certain questions and wanda and vision they're like you know they don't remember getting married, getting together. They don't remember a lot of things about their past or how they even came to be living in the house that they're in or how Vision got his job exactly. You know, Vision does have a job. He talked about his boss coming over for dinner. That was a well-worn trope from 50 sitcoms of, you know, shenanigans happening at dinner with the boss in the next room. Uh, I thought that was hilarious. Um, now that you're like, screw it, I'm not having my boss over for dinner. Screw it. <laughs> well, and, and it was really, you know, they used a lot of old school looking effects. You know, they didn't yeah. have to, but they wanted to make it very authentic, authentic yeah. looking to, to a 50 sitcom. So, yeah. Um, now, I get a sense that somewhere deep in the recesses of her mind, Wanda knows this is a manufactured reality because there's a scene in episode two where they hear a noise. Uh, first of all, sidebar. Man, Vision is one, 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 one slick dude because he somehow impregnated um, <laughs> uh, Wanda just by sheer thought. Um, uh, so, Well, if I remember correctly, though. Good on him. Well, maybe, I mean, but at the same time, it could be magic because didn't she have a couple of kids in the comics that she created via magic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which, so, is, which is, yeah. Uh, which we're going to see more of apparently because he, 
in the blink of an eye, seemingly, she's got a, 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 a she's got a bun in the oven, or got a, one, yeah. one or two buns in the oven. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Paul Bettany did did confirm, and I'm not going to go very far on this because it was a little gross. That Vision is able in that area of how do we say baby making, and that's all I'm going to say because he was <laughs> pretty explicit with what he said, and I was like, so, I didn't so, he need that so he doesn't need uh, the the blue Pfizer pill. Then, uh, no, evidently he can. Uh, I I really don't want to go there. Maybe that was part of the. <laughs> That was you know part of the Infinity Stone instead of the instead of Viagra the Stone kind of uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway so. we're not yeah let's not go there <laughs> kid friendly wanna, show I, I don't want to have thoughts of, of Vision impregnating no no no, uh, no. Wanda tonight when I try to sleep <laughs> um, but um, so yeah she ends up pregnant and then they hear a noise outside and they run outside and they see somebody in a hazmat suit. Look, your husband looking to emerge from the sewers. Sadly, it wasn't Splinter or the Ninja Turtles. Mm. As much as that crossover would be, would be a banger. Um, but in that moment, when that mysterious person stares at Wanda, the, the, the camera pans really close to her face, and she says, "No, no." And the, the, you know, the the scene rewinds, mm -hmm. and it goes back to the happier. Oh, I'm pregnant, and it ends on a happy note. Right. Um, so somewhere deep in her mind, Wanda knows this is not a real scenario. Yes. Playing it um, well, and like you did, you you said, you know, there was a voice coming from, I believe it was a radio, saying, "Wanda, who's doing this to you?" Yeah, and then there's also at the end of the first episode, somebody. Like it, as the episode closes, it pans away, and you see somebody in like a control room. You see just their hand, and they're writing on a notepad, watching right. a TV, and they're watching the same show we're watching. Mm -hmm. So, I have two schools of of thought. Clearly, that's a sword. The organization, not Keyman Sword, but Sword. Right. The, sword. The yes. Yeah. Um, so Sword is involved because you see the logo. On the on the the the, uh, uh, the diary or the the notepad. Uh, we also second, saw we also saw the Hydra symbol there in one of the yeah, commercials. And the, and one yeah. of the commercials, yeah, yeah. And the Strucker. And yeah, of course, the, the reference of Baron Strucker. Stark yeah. is all over the place. Yeah, and even the toaster makes the Iron Man repulsor song, which right. I'm like, I want one of those damn toasters. <laughs> I want an Iron Man toaster now. That's Marvel. Get on. Do they have Iron Man toasters? <laughs> Somebody it's, check Amazon. If they don't, Amazon. they probably will now. <laughs> I gotta check Amazon because I want one. That you know, that makes a little Iron Man helmets on my toast in the morning. That's the kind of crap I want. Um, from the first toast to the last. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but but also aside from the guy watching the the, the or the girl uh, watching the screen. How many of those are you gonna hit me with this week? Well, I, guess, well, I guess we'll find out. Um, but but you know. Somebody, somebody has made this 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 connection, and I and I kind of subscribe to this theory. I think Wanda has gone nuts, uh, given the events of Endgame and losing Vision, essentially losing him twice. So she's she's literally had a break in her mind, in the mental state, and has cre in part created this this facade of a world. Yes. And, and you know that from the comics that she's yeah. capable of doing that. So, which is which is part of House of M. So, I'm wondering. First of all, Donnie. By the way, now that I mentioned House of M, I think we what we should do is after we do the Vision book, okay, we should also review House of M, okay, because those are the two inspirations for the show. So, I think we should kind of it'd be good to review the show and then review those two books. Mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, so that's my theory. Uh, do you think I'm right there, or do you think I'm way off off base? I, I'm still unsure at this point. You know, I uh, I thought we would get a look at maybe who one of the villains was. Again, you talked about the hazmat suit. I actually thought it was a beekeeper suit when oh, I, when yeah. I rewatched. Yeah, again, and so 
when I first saw that person coming out of the ground, I was like, oh, maybe that's AIM, you know, the yeah, advanced retro, idea mechanic. I was going to say retro AIM suits, yeah. Okay, maybe, uh, but I don't know, you know, AIM being associated with bees because there were some bees there. And so I thought, okay, there's, the, the, you know, the lesser known Spider-Man villain Swarm, but I don't know, a, you know, a Swarm. I can't remember Swarm ever working with AIM. So uh, I still, that, that was kind of a, a, a dead end road there. So... Yes, it could be that Wanda is suffering some kind of psychological trauma that has put her into this state. Um, you know, I, I thought about, I'm like, are there any remnants of the Infinity Stones left that would somehow be capturing her? Is Are they involved? Uh, you know, has she been sent into the future? There's a lot of ways that this could go. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is, because we mentioned House of M, right? So obviously... She's not going to say no more mutants because currently they're, I mean, aside from potentially her, depending on how they handle continuity, there are no other mutants in the MCU as we know of right now. Could they do a reverse House of M where she's so fed up and alone that by the end of the series, the last line is, more mutants instead of no more mutants. And then that kind of leads to the birth of the of the X-Men. Yes, yeah. In the MCU. Could be interesting if they do that. I'm not saying they will. Just a thought I had. What if they do the, the switcheroo on the no more mutants thing? And yeah, I, I would like that. I, I very much like the fact that, you know, she is, for those of you who don't know, little comic book spoiler here, three, two, one, she is Magneto's daughter. And yeah. uh, that's that's something that I've always found very interesting and, about her. And yeah. Donnie, remember they, you know, the Sokovia and her parent, the whole her parents being dead thing. They could be her adoptive parents. Sure. I mean, there's not. I mean, there's nothing saying that they can't write that in. There are many easy ways to go back and retcon that if they yeah. choose to do so. And right. I think eventually they will. Personally, I think they will. And this show, because they, they've they've talked about this show opening up the multiverse, so. Mm -hmm. You know that could be an avenue where they uh, how they do it. So that's a beautiful there, word, multiverse. Yes, sir. I, I love it. It's just it's so good on both ends of the spectrum. DC and Marvel. I love it. Just rolls off the tongue. Can't wait. Um, but one question: there, What what did you make of Geraldine? She seemed to be kind of uh, I don't I don't know exactly what the word is, but very kind of curious and and kind of forthright with. You know, wanting to make her presence known with Vision and and Wanda. What did you make of her, the neighbor Geraldine? Yeah, the you mean the the blonde the blonde. Uh, I don't remember whether she was blonde or not. Uh, what what's her name? Uh, Tiona Paris, the actress. I'm trying to. That's not the one that's going to be in. Uh... The one who kept giving her no no the one who kept giving her like recipe ideas in her house. Yeah, it's not Monica Rambeau. That's. Um... No, that's not Monica. Well, the one that was helping her cook. Yes. The one that played Agate. Ag was it Ag is it wasn't Agnes? Wasn't Agnes her name, I think, or Agatha? I thought it was Geraldine, so I could be wrong. Hang on. Now, now, now we got to now we got to investigate that, buddy. Because now you now you've stumped me. Uh, hang on. Because I know one of them is a character from the comics. And I know. No, I I am wrong. You're right. It's uh, a yeah, Agnes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a character from the comics, from my understanding. Okay. I don't I don't know much about her, but she definitely seems to know. She seems. That's, to that's why I ask about that. She seemed to have, like, she is the the inference is that she knows more than she's letting on. Yeah, she could be part of the cause of this. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. There's definitely something up with her, but she is part of the comments from what I understand. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting, but the, yeah, th there is a duplicitous nature or a d d there, are, there are duplicitous seeds being dropped with that character. Yeah. Yeah. Monica Rambeau, that's a character that we know. Now, now that, whether we're going to see her um, kind of flower into a superhero in this in this series, I, I don't know, but she's another interesting character. So it's funny because we saw the kid version in Captain Marvel, and now we're seeing the adult version, which is cool. Yeah. 
and shows like the passage of time. Uh, yeah, but yeah, is there anything else you want to mention, or we can go on and, and I guess you want to rate each individual episode, or you want to rate it as a whole so far? I, I would say let's rate it as a whole because I, yeah, I in fact I don't exactly I mean, remember. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it as a whole, so we may as well. Right, and they dropped it as a whole, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, so on a, a scale, of, are we doing letter grades? I think for movies and TV, we said letter grades, right? Okay, yeah. Right. You know, I will give it a, you know, I'll give it a B plus. Uh, there were a few things, you know, I, I think they could have given us a few more seeds since this is a this is a nine episode season, right? Correct. They could have given us a little more, but as far as the blend of the humor and um. The intrigue of what is going on here, it was a really great experience, and I was very happy with what they did because this is not your normal Marvel fair. They are going in a different way, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, you know what? Your B, your B plus rating is, is spot on with mine. Yeah, I agree with that. And again, I, I'm not necessarily kind of disappointed with how much they gave us. Um, it, it it was a little jarring at first to, to get used to the sitcom aspect, for sure. It, it takes a little getting used to it. Uh, so that's where the B-plus kind of comes in. But, um, you, you know, I really, I, I like I said, the way they captured the spirit and the tone and the aesthetic of the comedy mm-hmm. of those eras, um, you know, 50s and 60s, between each episode. Yeah. Um, I can see teenagers just watching this show and being like, what in the world is going on? Oh, yeah. I, I guarantee you, all, all the teenagers, if there are bad reviews happening, it's from like the 14, 15, 60 year olds <laughs> who, 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 who have only known the MCU from Iron Man onwards. And that's literally the only form of entertainment they know. And they only have one frame of reference. Um, but, 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 so the way they captured the, all, all that stuff. Plus, just the mystery and in- intrigue, and the little droplets of hints of what's actually going on. The deeper, the deeper mystery at play. I, I love the balance of it all and how they they went back and forth. So yeah, uh, it, and you have to love that moment at the end. And again, spoiler alert here if you haven't seen it, which I wouldn't recommend watching. You know this until you've actually seen it. Yeah. But the color at the end, after two episodes of being in black and white the kind of splash of color at the end. As Vision would say, flourish. Yeah, when, <laughs> yeah, when, yeah, yeah, when Vision starts to, to, yeah. Yeah. And also the end credits look really cool. Yes, yeah. And the whole computer vibe of it all, it, like it looks like microchips, you know, inferring that Vision is an AI, you know, essentially, you know. Yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, overall, really enjoyed it. Happy to have Live action Marvel content back. Uh, it was a pleasure seeing that that Marvel logo at the beginning. I gotta say, yes, for it a lot of us, people, it really it brought a smile that, to my face. Yeah, and for a lot of people, that probably brought back a little nugget of you know a sense of, of normality returning yeah, to the I world. Got, I got a real dose of normality yesterday when the Leafs actually absolutely crap themselves. And then I watched the, and then I watched one division. So I was like, oh yeah, this is somewhat normal. <laughs> and then this morning, oh yeah, but I can't go outside, so we're still not normal yet. But not quite normal yet, but uh, um, yeah. But yeah, so on the whole, off to a really intriguing start, and I cannot wait to find out where this is all going. Uh, I can't wait till next Friday at three a.m. Yeah, but uh, same. Well, I'm not saying by the. Same vision time, same vision channel for you. Um, but I think that brings our episode to a close. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we re- enjoy recording it. Uh, Donnie, if, um, if our viewers want to keep in touch and talk and theorize and speculate about what exactly is going to happen on One Division, where could they do that on social media with you? You can find me on Twitter as the Emerald Enthusiast, where I do Green Lantern product reviews that I from YouTube that I link to my Twitter account. But I also talk about a lot of things comic book involved. 
I love both Marvel and DC and many of the independents. So anything you want to talk about, maybe I'll learn something from you too. You can hit me up there though on Twitter as the Emerald Enthusiast. Awesome. And if you want to find me, it's Adam underscore Leafs fan on Twitter. Uh, in brackets, disgruntled when they lose, happy when they don't. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then on Facebook, it's the Multiverse Musings podcast uh, network Facebook page. Go there, ask for permission to join the group. I will add you, and we can continue the conversation there. Also, our network has its own Twitter page. It's at MMNPDC. So if you want to just – either you can find me on my personal account or that account, and on either account, I'll talk with you about any of this stuff. There's a lot of geeky goodness there, so make sure to follow us on Twitter. But until our next episode, two things. A, remember Excelsior, as always. And B, remember that WandaVision is forever, from the first parody of a 50s sitcom to the last. So long, everybody. So long, everyone. <laughs>